Okay. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome on my behalf as well. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Katri Seitsonen, and I work as an information specialist in Aalto University. And next, uh, let's discuss about the uh, Horizon Europe program 2021-2027 and open access requirements in, in this program, uh, which are applied from the uh, Plan S uh, principles. So we will dis discuss these both items today. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please write them in the chat. And after my presentation and after recording has ended, we can have a discussion and, and check your questions in, in detail. Here is the content of my presentation. So first, let's have a look at the background of Plan S, what we actually mean when we talk about Plan S and the principles which are then applied in, in Horizon Europe projects regarding open access uh, to scientific publications. And then uh, I will talk about uh, open access journals and hybrid journals in my presentation many times. So uh, let's have a short look uh, what we what is the difference between them and what we mean when we talk about hybrid journals, for example. And then in the end, we will finally have a look at the uh, open access requirements in Horizon Europe projects. And then later on, a short look at the uh, early and open sharing of research practices in, in these Horizon Europe projects. Uh, so here is the background of Plan S. Uh, it is an initiative by international and national research funders. Uh, European Commission and Science Europe were involved in establishing it. And Academy of Finland has joined this coalition S as well, which is the coalition of these uh, research funders. And this means that these uh, Plan S principles uh, will apply to all Academy of Finland and Horizon Europe funding calls, which were opened in 2021 and later, but these uh, principles do not apply retrospectively. And the aim of Plan S is to uh, maximize the accessibility and the impact of research which has been conducted with public funding. So if there is public funding behind, behind the research uh, from any of these coalition S funders, uh, the research results need to be made publicly available as open access publications. So this is the major aim of this uh, Plan S initiative. Uh, Antti was also talking about the uh, current uh, costs of scientific publishing. And uh, this is another aim of the Plan S initiative to uh, reduce the costs of scientific publishing and make them more transparent. So uh, and they are criticizing the current um, business model where both subscription fees and publication fees apply. So they, their aim is to uh, change this current business model towards a model uh, based on open access publishing. And the idea behind all this is that no, no science should be behind the paywall. So there shouldn't be a research articles which are behind the paywalls uh, if there is public funding behind these uh, publications. And Antti was also talking about the academic reputation market and uh, Plan S uh, acknowledges the current role of scientific journals. And they do acknowledge that the researchers should have a freedom to publish in those, those journals which are proper for them. But however, at the, at the same time, they are trying to revise this uh, current, current uh, model of scientific publishing, which is based on these subscription fees and that uh, in one way that it wouldn't be as important uh, where you publish instead, what you publish would, would make more difference. Uh, you will get the slides afterwards and each slide there is a link for more information. Uh, for example, here you can read more about the uh, background of, of Plan S. Uh, Plan S has uh, one, one major aim and 10 different principles, and here are the most important principles from the point of view of a researcher. And the uh, first one is that the, uh, if there are scientific publications which result from publicly funded research, they must be published in open access journals or otherwise made immediately available without any embargoes. 
And in addition, uh, these publications must be licensed under open licenses. Uh, Creative Commons attribution license CC BY is recommended. And then, as I already mentioned, that the uh, plan is, is not supporting this current publishing model where both subscription fees and, and uh, publication fees apply, which means this hybrid model. So this is no longer supported by the funders and only the publication fees in open access journals should be reimbursed by the uh, funders. And how these plan S principles are then applied to uh, Horizon Europe projects. So in Horizon Europe 2021-2027 uh, program, these uh, principles apply to all peer reviewed publications which has been conduct conducted within these projects. So these publications need to be made immediately open access and also deposited to a trusted repository, which for example, in Alda University, it means ACRIS, our institutional repository, or for example, archive, which Antti was presenting in his presentation. And this immediate open access should be made at the latest at the time of the publication. Uh, it can be applied either to the version of record, the final published version of the article, if it's available open access, or uh, in addition, the, uh, or the final accepted manuscript, which means the peer reviewed manuscript version, which however differs from the version of record regarding to layout and editing, for example. And in Horizon Europe, these uh, plan S principles apply also to monographs and other long text formats. Uh, plan S actually is more liberal in, in this sense that they do acknowledge that publishing scientific bo books is different from publishing in scientific journals. And plan S would allow uh, embargoes even for monographs, but Horizon Europe actually requires this immediate open access for monographs as well. And also they require that the publication should be licensed with uh, CC by license. However, there are a few exceptions for these monographs, uh, CC by NC, which means that their commercial use can be forbidden, and uh, CC by ND, which means that if there are any changes made to the original article, it cannot be distributed anymore. And the idea with the open licenses is that the authors would retain sufficient IP rights for their work. And as a contrast to the current uh, Europe European Union um, practices, uh, so only publication fees in full open access journals are reimbursed in Horizon Europe projects. So uh, if you publish a paper open access in a hybrid journal, that is no longer supported. By the funders, so they cannot be allocated to the project costs anymore. And here you will find find again more information from the Horizon Europe program guide. Then I already mentioned a couple of times these open access journals, and uh, and that this is now the uh, option which is uh, reimbursed by the funders and also. Uh, uh, supported by the plan S and open access journals are journals in which the whole content is available open access so all articles in the journal are available open access and anyone can have access to those despite the country or, or the location or the institution they are studying or working in and this means that there are no subscription fees for the readers or for the institutions uh, but however usually there are publication fees or so-called APC fees for the authors. Uh, there are a few examples of open access journals, uh, for example, IEEE Access, Science Advances, Nature Communications, they are all um, open access journals. You will get these uh, slides afterwards, so then you can have a look at those links and example links yourself, but uh, here is a um, here is a screenshot of this uh, scientific reports article. And as you can see, it, is, uh, it says there that it's an open access article. And uh, if you look at more information from the uh, publisher website, it says here that the, uh, it's an open access journal and all articles are free to access, download, share, and reuse, which means that they are licensed with these open licenses. 
And then there is also a publication fee, article processing charge available. And in Europe, it's about 1,800 euros, which is still quite reasonable uh, APC fee. Then uh, next, the uh, hybrid journals. Um, these are subscription-based journals uh, which provide part of their content uh, open access and part of the content is available only through subscriptions. So there are both uh, subscription fees for the uh, readers or for the institutions, and also there are open access fees or these APC fees for the authors if they wish to uh, publish their paper open access in a hybrid journal. So there is this double, <laughs> double payment model, which uh, Plan S is now uh, criticizing and trying to uh, change this, this, this model. And these are uh, articles which are not available open access in these hybrid journals. So th those can be accessed only through these subscriptions or other way is to uh, pay a separate individual fee of, of each article. And we here at Aalto University, we have access to many of the uh, hybrid journals and the content behind these paywalls because Aalto University is providing us the access and Aalto University is uh, subscribing to these journals on behalf of us. And uh, I took again a few examples. Let's have a look at those. So uh, this is uh, from the Neurology Journal. It's a journal by Volters and Kluber, who publishes mainly medical journals. And therefore, all the universities does not have a subscription to these journals. And therefore, I chose this as an example, uh, because uh, if I try to access, access this article, even from the Alto network, I don't have access to it. It says that this article requires a subscription in order to view the full text. So I am able to see the abstract and the details of the uh, article, but not the full text. And if I would like to have access to this, I would need to pay a separate fee of $39. And then here is another example from the same journal, even from the same volume and issue. And as you can see, this one is available open access. And I checked that the, um, the authors or the institutions have paid the uh, APC fee of about $4,000, depending on what license they have chosen. So I hope this example uh, brings this, uh, this double payment model in uh, more concretely uh, to you. So that why, why Plan S is, is, trying to, uh, is trying to change this model and is criticizing these uh, both, uh, both uh, fees. Uh, then I already mentioned that the uh, Aldous University is subscribing to uh, many journals which are behind the paywall. Aldo has uh, many read and publish agreements with researchers and uh, that means that we in Aldo University when we use Aldo's network we have access to those content as well, which is behind the paywall. So if you go to Elsevier journals, for example, it says that brought to you by Aldo University and in Taylor and Francis, access provided by Aldo University and IEEE Explore, access provided by Aldo University again. So uh, this is just to uh, illustrate this, uh, that, uh, that the research institutions, like Antti mentioned, they are using a lot of a lot of money for these subscription fees so that the researchers and students would have access access to this content behind these paywalls. Uh, then, uh, although it was mentioned that Plan S is not supporting publishing in hybrid journals, but there are, however, a few examples which make these hybrid journals Plan S compliant and that the researchers can, can still publish in, in these and uh, comply with the Plan S principles. And the first one are transformative agreements. Uh, I mentioned that Aldo has uh, many read and publish agreements with publishers, and most of these are transformative agreements uh, maintained and neg negotiated by the National Finale Organization. And this transformative means here that the publishers have agreed 
that they will uh, change their business model from this subscription-based model towards a model uh, based on, on open access publishing within a certain time frame. And they have also agreed that they will make the, yes, um, the costs of, of publishing in their journals more, more transparent. And if you are able to uh, use this agreement and publish within these uh, transformative agreements, it means that you can publish your paper open access in a hybrid journal, and there are no costs for the authors because they are covered uh, within these uh, agreements. So there is more information on all those transformative agreements here. And if you are from Alba University and you wish to uh, benefit from these agreements, uh, you need to be the corresponding author of the article in order to get the benefit. And of course, same applies if you are from some, some other new university and your university has an has a agreement with the publisher. So you need to be the corresponding author in order to uh, get the benefit. And another exception are the transformative journals. Again, the same meaning with the word transformative, that uh, the publisher has agreed that these journals will be, and their business model will be changed towards an uh, open access publishing model within a certain time frame. For example, Spring and Nature has transformative journals as well as uh, ACM and Elsevier. And uh, ACS, the American Chemical Society, also recently announced that they will have some transformative journals in the future as well. And in some cases, these transformative journals may be included in these transformative agreements. Uh, but if not, those cases are, are as well. It's good to remember that um, it is... Uh, compliant to publish in, in these transformative journals. So uh, if you publish in a transformative journal, you will uh, comply with the open access requirements of Horizon Europe. But uh, the Horizon Europe does not reimpose these fees coming from uh, publishing in transformative journals. So they cannot be included in, in project cost, but instead the uh, research institutions should cover these instead. And Coalition S has a detailed list of transformative journals on their web pages. So there, and it's I think it's quite up to date. So it's good to uh, good to check it once in a while. Then now we have covered the uh, open access journals and and hybrid journals and and how to uh, publish in hybrid journals with a Plan S compliant way. And there is also a third, third option to um, publish your paper and uh, comply with Plan S principles. Um, I mentioned in the beginning that the uh, Plan S do acknowledges that the researchers need to publish in those venues which are proper for them. And although they wouldn't be open access journals. And as a one solution for this, uh, Coalition S has developed this uh, right retention strategy, which means that the authors um, could publish their papers uh, behind the paywall and still comply with Plan S principles by uh, making their final accepted manuscript, the peer reviewed manuscript, uh, openly available immediately after publication, and that the uh, CC BY license would be applied to this manuscript. So this is the uh, the goal goal of coalition is that this way the authors could comply with their Planet's principles and that authors, those authors who are funded by the coalition as funders would have a right, right to, uh, to uh, apply this SCC by license and, uh, and make their manuscript open immediately without any embargo. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, if we look at what the publishers say, Many publishers currently have their own guidelines on how to comply with uh, Plan S principles. And uh, most of the publishers are currently saying that in order to comply with Plan S, uh, you need to publish your paper open access with CC by license, which of course usually means the publication fees as well. Uh, however, there are a few exceptions. For example, ACM is clearly saying that the, uh, that the authors can, can um, apply the CC by license for their final accepted manuscript and this way comply with the plan S. And of course, this is now the current situation. It may change over the years, but uh, this is now what the publishers are, are currently reacting to the plan S. Uh, there are people today from uh, 
different institutions and even from different countries. And it's good to remember that there may be some national legislation or some institutional policy which may affect that how this uh, rights retention strategy is applied in your institution. Uh, but we here in Aalto, our aim is to encourage the uh, authors to uh, find out this plan is compliant principles already advanced before submitting the papers so that there wouldn't be a situation that they publish in a, in a journal which is not plan as compliant. And that uh, what matters with the publishers is the, is the publishing agreement. So uh, it's good to be uh, aware of these, what, what publishers are saying about this right retention strategy. Then we are finally here uh, where we can have a look at the uh, open access requirements in Horizon Europe project. So this uh, one in green, this reimbursed option, I already mentioned. So they are the full open access journals, which give you the Im immediate open access and a CC by license for your paper. And Horizon Europe will reimburse these costs on, on behalf of you. Then there are these two options, uh, which are non, they, they are not reimbursed, but however, they are compliant options. So the transformative agreements and the transformative journals both give you the immediate open access and a CC by license. And if you are able to use the transformative agreements, then these uh, publication fees are covered on behalf of you. Uh, but if you are published in, in transformative journal, then your research institutions would cover these fees because Horizon Europe is, is not funding uh, publishing in transformative journals. And then here is the gray area, the right retention strategy, which is uh, one option given by the Plan S and also by, the, by Horizon Europe. So therefore it is here, but it's good to remember that at least for now, uh, it is supported only by few publishers. Uh, then how to know which journal is a full open access journal and which is a transformative journal and, and which is included in a transformative agreement. Uh, well, if you are from Aalto University, so then you can, of course, always contact us at Aalto's research services. We are happy to uh, guide you and help you uh, with these questions. Uh, but Coalition S has also developed a journal checker tool, which is quite easy to use. Uh, you just need to type in there the journal name you are planning to submit your paper to, then choose your funder. So I have chosen here the Horizon Europe and then your institution. So I, I picked all the university. And then this tool will give you information whether this journal you have chosen, is it compliant with the plan is or not. And here you can see that the uh, I took the uh, IEEE access and it's a full open access journal and therefore it is it is compliant and Horizon Europe would reimburse the costs of publishing in this journal. But as you can also see, it says there's a transformative agreement, which means that all the university has a transformative agreement with IEEE. And uh, if you are from other university and you publish in, in IEEE access and you are the corresponding author of your article, then these publication fees could be covered by the transformative agreement. And uh, so uh, this uh, journal checker tool includes information about these transformative agreements as well. However, there may be some delays. Uh, for example, Aalto University has recently signed a transformative agreement with IOP publishing, but the data is not yet available here. So currently this says that the IOP publishing uh, journals are not plan as compliant, but they are because we have, have, a, have a new transformative agreement with the publisher. Uh, then uh, here is a table of the uh, open access, uh, open science practices in Horizon Europe projects. So this presentation has mainly covered the uh, open access to publications, which is a mandatory for peer reviewed publications in Horizon Europe projects. And it's also recommended for, for other research outputs as well, even for those which are not peer reviewed. Uh, then there are some other mandatory practices in Horizon Europe, for example, uh, the data management plan is, is mandatory for all Horizon Europe projects. 
Uh, but next, let, let's have a short look about the uh, early and open sharing of research, which is a recommended practice in uh, Horizon Europe projects. Um, early and open sharing of research means that the uh, pre-registration of the research plan, it's actually quite common and, and mandatory currently in medical research. And now it's recommended by the Horizon Europe, which means that the, uh, your research plan will be made publicly available in a repository. And, and this will make the research hypothesis, for example, uh, publicly available already before the data is collected. Then another form of uh, early and open sharing of research are the registered reports. And this means that the research article is peer reviewed in two stages. So first the research plan is peer reviewed. And if it is accepted, it means that also the final article is provisionally accepted for publication. And the idea behind this is that this publication uh, is based on the quality of the research. So because the research plan is uh, peer reviewed already before the data is collected, so that the, and the publication will be pub published regardless of the outcome. So this is the idea here behind these registered reports. Uh, but we actually have a webinar coming on uh, next week on study pre-registration and registered reports on 12th of May by Dr. Enrico Clerian from Aalto University. So if you are interested in these options, I highly recommend you to uh, attend this webinar next week and, and have more information there. And there you can discuss these practices in more detail. Uh, preprints are also uh, one recommended practice by Horizon Europe and perhaps the most, most common one. So this means that the uh, manuscript is uh, published in a subject repository in a preprint platform, for example, archive already before the uh, final publication of the, of the article. And this is quite common, for example, in the field of computer science, physics, mathematics, they use archive a lot. And uh, it's just good to remember and always check the target uh, journal's policy, whether they allow uh, sharing this preprint, this version, which is not yet peer reviewed before publication. And this can be done, for example, by using Sherpa Romeo. Uh, you just need to add a journal title there and then it will tell you about the uh, preprint policy and postprint policy of the journal you have chosen. So this is good to, good to check in advance before you uh, upload anything in these preprint platforms. And it's good to remember that Horizon Europe uh, mandates this CC by license for the peer reviewed publications. But our interpretation is that it is not applied, this does not apply to the publications which are not yet peer reviewed. And instead, we recommend a more restrictive licenses for these uh, preprints. For example, Archive has, has its own, own license. And that there is also a possibility to use uh, version specific licenses for, for the, uh, so different from the preprint and different for the final published version. Then uh, we are now almost done, done with this presentation. Uh, just one, one more slide about the uh, Open Research Europe, which is a publishing platform uh, for EU funded research. It's maintained by European Commission. And this Open Research Europe is now trying to uh, uh, answer to all these questions raised by the uh, Plan S and, and the uh, Horizon Europe program, for example. So this is a free platform for publishing preprints, for example. And then this, uh, it's possible to have an open peer review, which is also one, one recommended practice by Horizon Europe. So it's poss possible to have an open peer review in this platform. And then the, uh, it's also possible to comply with Plan S principles if you publish your paper in, in this uh, platform. And because this give you, gives you, for example, a CC by license. And it's good to remember that this can be used if there is publications from EU funded projects. So at least one of the authors should have a funding from EU. So then it's possible to uh, use this uh, Open Research Europe platform. 
if you are interested in this, so then uh, there is more information available from here. Then there are some frequently asked questions, which hopefully I, I was able to cover in this presentation. So uh, although Plan S is encouraging to publish in, in open access journals, so do I have to leave it my publishing to open access journals only? So no, no, you don't. But it's good to remember that Horizon Europe reimburses only the costs of publishing in these open access journals. And uh, if you are publishing in a hybrid journal, uh, you should check that whether it's the journal transformative journal or is it in a, included in a, in a transformative agreement in order to uh, make it plan as compliant. And then if you are from Aalto University and you need help in, in finding out that whether is this journal plan is compliant or not, you can always contact us at research services from ACRIS at Aalto.fi, or then you can use this journal checker tool I just presented. And then I shortly talked about the right retention strategy, so the possibility to publish behind the paywall and, and make the final accepted manuscript available immediately without any embargo and apply, apply a CC by license for it, and uh, how the publishers are reacting to this. So this is, of course, a situation we need to follow. But currently, it seems that most publishers, uh, they do not support this option. And instead, they require that authors publish their articles open access and in order to comply with Plan S. OK, that was it. Uh, there are inf more information available in all the web pages in Plan S and in Funders Open Science Requirements. So there is the Horizon Europe program and information on, on that available there.